Today is Wednesday, December 20th, and you know what that means. It's National Signing Day. Get your popcorn ready. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's right, $150. Bucks if your team wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Wednesday to all. Happy National Signing Day to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. The 2024 football recruiting class will be signing their national letters of intent beginning very early this morning. Probably as soon as you're listening to this, there have already been some pens to paper, but the 2024 athletes will be signing to where they'll begin their collegiate careers. In years past, this day can be a day of chaos, too. It can come in the form of last-minute flips, surprise decisions, or maybe even sighs of relief for some schools. Now, NC State, in amidst of all the, the portal chaos, how easy it is to forget how powerful this 2024 high school recruiting class actually is. It is one of Dave Dorn's top recruiting classes in his entire tenure. And because of this, of course, we also have some higher profile players that have caught the attention of some other schools. Now, it's not exactly a reason for panic because it is a good thing that you are attracting the attention of some other schools. But a couple players in this 2024 class that we're going to touch on, we're going to start with wide receiver Terrell Anderson. Now, Kenton, this is a big time wide receiving talent that NC State absolutely needed to get from the high school level. Terrell is out of Grimsley High School in Greensboro. He's a four-star wide receiver. There were a little bit of rumors earlier in the fall that Georgia had come knocking on his door, started to flirt with Anderson a little bit, and some were concerned that a potential flip would be on the horizon. However, the trail seems to have gone cold. It feels like Terrell Anderson's going to be in the red and white on Wednesday. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, Grayson, that's a little misleading because Georgia is also in red and white. Ah. But very seriously, you're you're absolutely right here. From all the reports that I've heard, from all the sources that I have that, you know, are, are closest thing, everybody's saying that we're safe there, we're good there. Uh, so, you know, I'm not really too worried about that. But I, I kind of want to have a conversation about how, and, and maybe we'll table this conversation for another day, but how... NC State's receiving core this last year was, by and large, outside of Kevin Casey on a liability, was, by and large, a group that, you know, many folks looked at and said, more has to come of you all. There, there has to be more there. And lo and behold, in less than a year's time, this could be one of the strengths, not just of the offense, but potentially of the team as a whole. I mean, how interesting is that? How how interesting is that to to look at that situation and say that, you know, between the transfer portal and this recruiting class, which is loaded with some talent, which may get another infusion of talent that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later, is, you know, this is what, what a time to be alive. Terrell Anderson is very much a guy that can come in and compete for a starting wide receiver role from day one. He is that kind of talent coming out of the high school ranks, so. Assuming that he does put pen to paper for the Wolfpack, this is a big-time get. Sometimes the, the best gets are the ones that you already have. That's very much the case in a guy like Terrell Anderson. Next guy I want to touch on is quarterback commit Cedric Bailey out of Hollywood, Florida. This is the six foot six QB you've probably seen many clips of on Twitter. Kind of our next QB of the future, per se, now that MJ Morris has moved on, but of late, Cedric Bailey had picked up a lot of interest from Miami, being that he's from 
virtually right down the street. Bailey also has quite a few teammates on his high school team that are committed to Miami. So you could connect the dots on how Miami was very easily uh, starting to get into his ear. But just a few weeks ago on social media, Cedric Bailey reconfirmed his commitment to the Wolfpack. And it certainly sounds like he too will be wearing red this fall. Yeah, and this is a young man that's an Under Armour All-American. I mean, he's a he's a special guy. You look at him and you look at uh, him being a traditional pocket passer, but he's a very long strider. When those long legs get to moving and grooving downfield, he can be something special. Obviously, some people have a lot of concerns about his release and all that. I personally don't. I don't think they need to completely revamp it, maybe tweak it a little bit here and there, but I don't, I don't see the need for an overhaul, especially knowing – the history of what generally happens to quarterbacks when they completely overhaul uh, their passing mechanics. But very seriously, you talk about needing a quarterback of the future. You talk about all these weapons we got coming in. Somebody has to get in the ball. And Grayson McCall has one year left. So somebody has to step in and fill that void after him. Cedric Bailey, come on down, brother. This this is right for the taking. This is your spot. This is your crown of taking. As I said before, so long as you don't plan on handing that spot back to Dorn, congratulations, you'll be here and they will not recruit over you. Next bigger name to mention is Ronnie Royal. Uh, we we are recruiting him as a safety. He comes out of Gulf Shores, Alabama. Now, Ronnie made the incredible interception, the one-handed interception in the state title game that you also have probably seen on social media uh, at this point. Stellar athlete, and he, he can do absolutely everything. Kenton will probably touch on his stats in just one second here, but yeah. being that he is from kind of the deep south and SEC country, it's very easy to understand why some SEC schools might have taken very late interest in Ronnie Royal being the athlete that he is. But again here, it feels like the NC State Wolfpack are going to land an incredible athlete that brings a lot to the table. This young man is an absolute freak. If he doesn't make the freak list uh, from who, – who's the guy that does that list? Uh -huh. If he doesn't make that list, I know that the, the fix is in. There, there's something going on that's kind of fishy there. Let me let you in on this young man's stats just for a second here. Over 7,000 rushing yards, nearly 1,800, literally 1,793 receiving yards, 2,691 return yards, over 11,000 yards in total, 123 touchdowns combined with 239 tackles and 15 interceptions. I am telling you all right now, I have seen this young man play. And granted, it wasn't in person. It was the film. And watch, and not the highlights. I mean the, the straight up and down film of this young man play. We're getting a good, we're getting a real special. And I'm going to tell you this. Folks are going to look back on him coming to NC State, and they're going to say, how did they let him slip out of the state of Alabama? And that's going to be a question that's going to be asked for a very, very long time because this young man – he he can absolutely do it any way you want it. He can give it to you all types of ways. And and if you are a fan of college football, if you've been a fan of college football for a long time, think Jabril Peppers without the pass rushing ability. That's that's probably the closest thing that I give him because he can play all over the field. He can play that nickel corner. He can even in in some. I think. I think he could play a little outside corner here and there. He obviously is a safety. He can probably – you can probably give him the ball on offense and some good things will happen. This is a young man that the more I hear about him, the more I call up folks and ask, hey, you you heard about Ronnie Royal? How did he get out of Alabama? Because that's been my question for the longest. I'm like, how? what happened? I'm telling you right now. This one here is a, uh, you know, hey, thanks for this one. Um, you know, SEC country, hey. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. And then the last name here, it's probably the one you've been waiting for me to say. We learned late Tuesday evening that there is a, a well, was, there was a young man committed to the Dirty Feet Club, the UNC Tar Heels, wide receiver, Keenan Jackson, mm -hmm. decommits from UNC on Tuesday evening. You dig a little deeper, you see some reports over on the Carolina channels. They are expecting Keenan Jackson to flip his commitment and sign with the NC State Wolfpack on Wednesday, on National Signing Day, no less. I mentioned popcorn in the intro. Should I upgrade that to some wine and some cheese, anyone? My brother in Christ, upgrade it to whatever you want. Because this young man, you know, we talk about stats and all that. 
guess who the leading receiver of all time and it's in the state of North Carolina is for receiving yards in the season? That's a great question. Uh, I'm stumped, to be honest with you. It's this young man. It's him. It's it. Keenan Jackson? It's Keenan Jackson, 1,704 yards, the most. Oh, my God. That's that's it. That's most in the season. This young man is absolutely electrifying. I mean, and and guess what? Guess where he played his last college or our last high school football game? It was in Carter Finley State Championship. In Carter Finley. He felt so good. He won the MVP in that game. So I guess you could say he's a natural at making plays in the Carter. I guess one could say he felt at home in the Carter, if you will. You know, I, I, I guess you could say he's looking forward to making more plays in front of the wolf statue. Who knows? You know, I, I, that's just what some are saying. Some are saying it. I'm just telling you what some are saying. You know, on a, on a day that brings so much excitement and so much positivity and so much optimism in National Signing Day, yeah, to flip one of those – is just the biggest cherry on top imaginable, and especially a guy like a Keenan Jackson who brings yeah. a yeah. whole lot of talent. Yeah, that'll play. We'll take some Keenan Jackson in the red and white. We absolutely will. I'm going to tell you this right now, okay? I rarely ever dub guys a future star in Raleigh, and I'm not going to do it here because I haven't seen enough of Mr. Jackson to fully say that. Be on the lookout for him. Be on the lookout for him. This is a kid, big time, big time potential, big time upside. And here's the thing. When you look at guys with a lot of stars and all that, generally you look at a guy who has all the athletic ability, but the production may not be there. Or the he's a great athlete, but tying it together as a football player is a little tough sometimes for him. Not the case with Mr. Jackson. Not the case at all. Up next, we're going to take a look back and review the 2024 recruiting class. It's been a little bit, so let's see exactly if everything holds. Who will be putting pen to paper for the Wolfpack on Wednesday? After a quick word from our sponsor. Our first sponsor of the day is FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's right, $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. I am anxiously awaiting this to be passed and legal in the state of North Carolina. We're just weeks away from actually being able to use FanDuel here. You can find all of your NFL bets as well as any other sport you can imagine on FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and continue winning this NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, we're back here. Ken, let's take a look back at this 2024 recruiting class to see, again, if everything holds, who all will be joining the Wolfpack here on Wednesday. I'll just start here from the top and read my way down. I like to get all of my recruiting rankings from 247 Sports, so all of the numbers and stars and ranks, that's where I'm reading off of here. So as we sit right now, the overall rank for this 2024 class is 28th in the country. You know, you add in the Keenan Jackson, you'll probably see that come up a couple notches as well. So keep an eye on that. But our 23 hard commits, four-star wide receiver Terrell Anderson from Greensboro, four-star linebacker Elijah Groves out of Tennessee, four-star athlete Jonathan Paler out of Burlington, four-star safety Ronnie Royal out of Alabama, three-star quarterback Cedric Bailey out of Florida, three-star offensive lineman Robbie Martin out of West Virginia, three-star wide receiver Jamar Boston out of South Carolina, three-star linebacker Joshua Ofor out of Georgia, three-star corner Asad Brown out of Maryland, Uh, three-star defensive lineman Joshua Alexander Felton out of Orlando, Florida. See you in just a couple weeks, Joshua. Three-star wide receiver Christian Zachary out of South Carolina. Three-star safety Brody Barnhart out of Charlotte. Three-star running back Jaden Scott out of Georgia. Three-star defensive lineman Justin Terrell out of Georgia. Three-star cornerback Javon Bali out of Georgia. Three-star offensive tackle Tyler West out of Andrews, North Carolina. Three-star offensive tackle Trent Mitchell out of Gastonia, North Carolina. Three-star defensive lineman Chase Bond out of Ohio, three-star running back Isaiah Jones out of Rollsville, North Carolina, 
Three-star linebacker Cannon Lewis out of West Virginia. Three-star linebacker Zane Williams out of Wake Forest, North Carolina. And then, of course, we have our two JUCO commits. Three-star tight end Dante Daniels from Butler Community College. And we just saw yesterday three-star linebacker Wyatt Wright out of Mississippi. Kenton, what are your give me your like your top three play really catch your eye out of this class? So many that I could go with here. I mean, you really can't go wrong with any of these guys. And of course, you're always gonna have some that that kind of fly under the radar. So I'm gonna go from one of each category, right? One that's highly touted, one that you're looking at saying, hey, he should be a guy, one that's like, we gotta wait and see, and a guy that, you know, I think it could be something special down the road if he develops a little bit here. Uh so I'm gonna start with Jonathan Paler. Right. I mean, I've talked about the kid at nausea and, and, and seeing the way and seeing the ways rather that uh, that we use Kevin Concepcion and what a crucial piece he was to this offense. Think about a guy like Paler. That's like you can look at Paler and just see that is a physically developed young man. That is not a young man that goes in the weight room and looks in the mirror. OK, just just enjoys going in there to see how cut his biceps look today. I'm going to tell you something. Him combined, uh, again, a receiving core that was a great weakness to this team, potentially being a strength over the next few years. Who we? Who we? And, and we all know the new way of the game, get athletes the ball in space. He's one of those guys that you look at and say, if you get him the ball in space, he could do something special. Uh, one of the guys that I would say is is kind of in the middle that not a lot of people are talking about, but that I – I've seen this game and I like it. I like it a lot is Brody Barnhart. This young man, he, he can thump. He is happy to do so. He is very heady. It feels like he always knows where the ball is going to be. And and it always, he's just Johnny on the spot. I mean, this is a young man that just, he's always there, always in position, always he's where he's supposed to be at all times. And so with that being said, I'm intrigued to see how he's used in this defense. Now, there are some questions about is he quick enough laterally and all that good stuff, but I'm going to tell you what. Worst case scenario, with a guy who likes to hit, and I believe he's about uh, 210, maybe 200 pounds right now, you could easily beef him up a couple pounds and put him at one of those linebacker spots. He'll be just fine. He'll be just fine. Brody Barnhart is another one. And lastly – I'm so glad that he's getting the opportunity to leave a second-rate state like Ohio. Mr. Bond of Massillon, Ohio, come on down. I think that that's a young man that could be really, really special in this defense. He feels like one of those defensive tackles that's kind of built for this scheme. He feels like one of those guys that's a a tweener by the way of a Davin Van, right? He's He's got the, the size to play on the inside, and he's got a frame that could easily add 30 pounds or so and uh, become something good there. But he's he's got the size to play on the inside if he is to gain that 30 pounds. But he's got some of the movement abilities that if you can develop some of the tools that are already there, if you can bring along uh, Chase Bond here, you can have something truly special on your hands in a couple of years. So for me, maybe my top guy I'm excited for in this class, linebacker Elijah Groves. Now, Elijah was the flip from Kentucky just about a week or so ago. Linebacker. And from everything I've read on Mr. Groves here, he is the realest of deals. He's a big body, big frame, super athletic linebacker. He's 6'4", 215, pre-Thunder. We talk about all the development that Coach Thunder does for the football team. He is that size, pre-Thunder. So you get some additional size, get some additional speed. You get him under Tony Gibson's wing. This could be a weapon of mass destruction. And for NC State, this linebacking core over the course of the last four or five years, we kind of feel like in our own right, a little bit of like a linebacker you because of the talent we've produced at that position. Elijah Groves is very much next up. He he will be a weapon when it's all said and done uh, when his time is up in Raleigh. My next guy that I feel like gets some attention, but maybe not enough attention, interior lineman Robbie Martin. Now, this is a big boy. This is a big man coming out of the state of West Virginia. He's 6'4", 285. This is exactly what we need to be adding into this offensive line. You get him under the wing of Coach 2J. You know, something I've noticed in some of the recruiting since 2J has entered the program, he seems to be attracting just bigger, 
beefier guys into this line as you know as opposed to like maybe a smaller frame but quicker uh you know quicker footwork more technique type of guy he wants mass he wants mass to move people and control the line of scrimmage i think robbie martin will have an excellent chance to do just that and my last one here i'm gonna go with cornerback Assad brown now Assad committed very early in the in this particular cycle it was earlier this spring from the things I've read on Assad here, he could be the, like the next Aiden White. He could be the next Shaheen Battle. Just a yeah. lockdown, put their top receiver on an island type guy. And again, cornerback, as, as deficient it felt like our secondary was at NC State for so many years, that is another position that has really become a strength here in the last four, five, six years. And Assad Brown, I think he fits perfectly into the type of defense that Tony Gibson has been rolling out year after year after year. He's physical. He can just shut off one entire side of the field. He's quick. He can make a play on the ball. I can't wait to see what he looks like in the red and white. Again, now all of these young men are expected to do good and great things in the program, and, and we're we're excited to have all these young men signing. These are just some some of the players that caught our eye in particular that we look at in terms of, of you know being impact players going forward. We're going to close out our Wednesday episode discussing the men's basketball game this evening. We owe St. Louis a little bit of get back. We'll tell you why after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is simply easier when you have that many quality candidates to choose from. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within just 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats that they might not have the time or resources in order to hire. So thankfully with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive quick and easy post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions last couple minutes here on wednesday nc state basketball is back in action this evening hosting the st louis billikens in pnc arena kenton do you have any idea what a billikin is uh it's a type of bird isn't it Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was a bird. I, I could be wrong. I thought that it was a bird all along because of their uniforms. But, you know, hey. I don't know. Me. some kind of funky looking thing. I, I don't really know what to call it. We'll go with a bird. That sounds right. Anyway, Lord, mercy. NC State is hosting St. Louis tonight. Coming off a tough loss against Tennessee down in San Antonio, like we mentioned yesterday. We owe St. Louis some get back. NC State basketball is 0-2 all-time against the Billikens of St. Louis. We lost in the, I believe it was the first round of the NCAA tournament way back in 2014. And most recently, we went on the road to play St. Louis. This was during the COVID year and fumbled the bag big time. Lost to a St. Louis team that was decent that year, but that was another crucial loss. Ultimately, missed the tournament. So, But if you remember that game, everybody in their mama had COVID that game. Yeah. Everybody named Mama had COVID, and it was, you know, it was just a very – I believe we were a six or seven deep that game, I want to say. Uh, we we very couldn't have – we couldn't have more than seven players. So I remember we were talking about, like, wow, they're really going through with this game, and it was it was just a mess. Especially, you know, some folks are hitting the panic button. Some folks are not hitting the panic button. Still a lot of season to play, but you have got to get back on the right track, and it starts tonight, whether – it's still implementing new rotations with the arrival of Cam Woods and MJ Rice. Figuring out who can be the lead scorer when some guys are struggling. Continuing to rebound, crash the boards. There just needs to be more cohesion, especially with ACC play still lurking on the horizon here. you got to absolutely take it to St. Louis on Wednesday evening. Absolutely, and become a top defense. I mean, for Christ's sake, I, as long as... Uh, Coach Keats has been coaching. How many times have we been in the top quarter of all defenses in America? That's a trick question. I don't believe once. I don't yep. believe we've been in the top. At least not. I know for a fact we haven't been in the top quarter of power fives once, but I believe it's all teams in the nation as well. 
that we need to get stops when we're not turning teams over. That's the reality. You know what I mean? You need to be able to, even against a team that's taking care of the ball, find ways to make it tough on their guys as well, and, and we'll be just fine. Also, a Billiken is a charm doll. It's a charm doll. It's a mythical creature that's meant to bring luck. So, okay, I, I would have preferred a bird, but that's but that's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> Something else that NC State needs is they need a healthy Mo Diara. You can really feel yeah. his, I guess, lack of presence in the lineup. Still nursing a little bit of a sore ankle. He has become a massive piece of this team before any of us really knew it. We need Mo Diara to be healthy as soon as possible in order to really get back up to full strength. Absolutely. The rebounding, the ability to stretch the floor from the four position, the ability to block shots as well. Uh, Mo's a critical piece of this thing, whether we want to you know, accept that or realize it or not. He's a critical piece of this thing, and he helps enable the depth to do what it does. He helps enable – us to go a bunch of different ways because we can go with twin tower look and mind you calling DJ Burns a tower is like kind of, you know, a little ironic, but he is a really good big man. And you can go a twin tower look with them, with those two in, or you can go kind of smaller and put MJ Rice at the four, put Mo at the five and kind of figure it out in terms of your guards and wings outside of those two. Or you can really go crazy and make it a, a kind of an all shooting lineup where you got a bunch of guys who can all knock it down uh, from deep in terms of MoDR and any combination of a four U one in that regard. So you know the reality is MoDR is a very he's a very flexible piece. He has a lot of versatility, which makes him valuable in multiple different situations. That'll do it for us here on Wednesday. Should be a very entertaining day on Wednesday, might I add, with a potential flip. All of the national letters of intent being signed should be an excellent day to be a Wolfpack football fan. Should be an excellent day to be a Wolfpack basketball fan as well, if all things go as they should in PNC. But make sure to hit that like button, drop your comments in the comment box, tell us what you think about all of our incoming commits and potentially the flip from a Keenan Jackson. Tell us what you think about NC State basketball, the state of the nation at the moment. Tell us what you think in the comments as well. And as always, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not already. We will see you all tomorrow. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.